What is good, Grey Gang? We're here today. We're about to do a Kentucky survival challenge. Now, the challenge is pretty straightforward. I'm out here in Kentucky, and I can only use one tool to survive the whole day. And the tool I'm choosing is a big knife. Now, I, I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me there. And I'm just going to come out here and say this is probably going to be one of the hardest challenges I've ever done on my channel. And you may also notice that I am carrying a bucket. That's going to be my one exception because I kind of need the bucket for a tripod. But I know what you're thinking. Kendall, dude, what's your plan right now? Where are you heading? Well, the place I'm heading right now is actually to my second pond. It's the one that's really small and kind of doesn't have anything in it. I want that to be my home base because I know there's a pretty good creek through there which should have some clean water. That's going to be my water source. Another really hard part about this challenge is that, uh, well, there's no trap and shack on wheels, guys. All I have is shoes today and I have to walk everywhere I go. That's going to be a tough one, guys. That's one that I really didn't think about till this morning and, you know, it's kind of a bummer, but I'll get over it. Nothing to cry about. Not on camera, at least. But also, while I'm down here, I need to be looking for a staff. A staff that, you know, like a big wooden stick. What I'm gonna do with that staff is turn it into something amazing that could catch me some food. <gasps> or if I can make a ground squirrel. Dude, I'm gonna try to kill a ground squirrel. Guys, this is our first opportunity. I'm gonna try to get us a ground squirrel. There's no season for ground squirrels, so I can kill them. It won't be a lot of food, but it'll be better than nothing. First, I've gotta find a stick and make a spear, though. There we go. Ooh, these shoes aren't good for survival at all. There we go. Let me just shave off this end a little bit. That way if I do hit it, hopefully it'll kill it instantly. We're looking for a real clean kill and quick too because I don't want to have to chase this thing down in a hole. We got to get down here before he goes back in his hole. We missed him, guys. He's he's so small. To be honest, guys, I don't really know what I was trying to do there. I mean, it's literally that big, and there probably wouldn't even be any meat on it if I did kill it. I guess it's worth a try, though. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> We'll go ahead and mark off ground squirrel off the list because I don't really see that happening at all. I did think of another opportunity and it will be frog. There's some good meat on bullfrog legs. <laughs> okay guys, we're actually halfway to my pond, but I want to stop here and I want to make an actual good spear. Right now, we're in our survival situation, guys. We have to be opportunistic. That means if there's a three-legged possum, we don't care. We have no mercy. We're going to kill a thing and eat it. If we see a squirrel fall out of a tree to its death, we gotta eat it. We gotta prepare for whatever may happen. And right now, I need to keep my eyes out for a long, straight stick. In a situation like this, you gotta be pretty picky. Or should I say, pretty sticky. <laughs> that didn't even make sense. Right, so I walked about 10 minutes that way. Didn't find any good sticks, but I did find where a, some kind of bird had been killed by probably a bobcat or fox or something. I went ahead and stole a feather because I think this could be useful. Also, I found this random looking sardine can from, well, a long time ago. I think I'm going to keep it too. I have no idea what for, but it may come in useful later. We got to be as creative as possible, and I don't have any plans for the sardine can right now, but you never know. In two or three hours, I could come up with an idea to use it. I decided I'm going to take this stick with me. Bend it over and chop. <laughs> There we go, guys. That was pretty easy. Okay, and so here's my staff. It's probably about five feet long. Now I can make two things. One, I can make a spear. It's just where I come right here, sharpen the tip to where I can actually stab something with. Here's the thing, though, guys. Spearing is more for larger animals. What I'm going to try to do is turn this into a gig. A gig has four prongs. It looks about like this. That way I can have a greater surface area of, like, spikes so that I can have a better chance of hitting something real small, like a fish. Now to do that, I am going to have to try to split my stick into four quarters. I ended up turning it into a three-way spear, but it's hard to make it perfect. And so now what we got is this right here. You can see that it is split into three, but it's not actually like protruding out at all. That's what I got this little thin branch. I'm gonna cut little pieces of it and slide it in between to spread it out. Slide that right in there. And so now you can see that they're actually starting to spread out. But what I can do with my knife is come in here and sharpen each one of those individual little spikes. It just give me a better overall chance of actually killing something and keeping it on. Enjoy this time lapse with you already guessed it. Epic Christmas music. <laughs> Anyways, let's head on down to the spot I was going to. And we made it, guys. We're to my second pond. Now, this is really small. There's no fish in it big enough to eat. That's the sad part. There's really only minnows in this location. But what I do like about this location is an awesome looking flat spot. And that rock. Yep. That's why I chose this location. A single rock. Yeah, I'm kind of second guessing my decision. Anyways, we're here now. It's time to set up camp. Now, since we're only here for really one day, there's no need to set up too big of a camp. But if there's one thing Gordon Ramsay has taught me, it is always get your kitchen ready before you start cooking. Let's see, we gotta have us a good cutting board right there. Good fire pit right here. We gotta have a plate. And you can't forget about the countertop. 
Oh yeah, there we go. And now we need a grilling system. If I catch a fish, how am I going to hold it over the fire? And even at that, how am I going to get fire? That's a really good question that I have actually not thought about yet. But the grill, oh the grill, that's going to be the hard part. Do I want to make a cool weave out of sticks like this? Or do I want to go more primitive method and just shove a stick right through the mouth of the stinking fish and fry like a piece of meat? I think we'll do a combination of both. I'm just kidding. We're doing the second one because it's a lot easier. I can tell you that. Alright guys, check this out. We got the fire pit and then we have these two sticks holding up this stick. This stick is kind of going to be like a rotisserie chicken, but instead it's going to be called a rotisserie fish. Get it? But yeah, it should be pretty easy. I just set it right there on the sticks and then I just spin it every so often. I think that's going to be really good. I really do. But what we actually need to do right now is get some fire making material. We got to have stuff with, uh, well, dry stuff. That's basically about it. But as for leaves, this one looks good. This one looks good. This one looks good. If they're crumbling as I pick them up, that's probably a good sign. There are a few leaves that you do want to stay away from. I've learned that these right here, uh, oak leaves, I believe, they don't burn good at all. On the other hand, birch leaves like this, they're basically thinner than paper. These burn really Good. All right, there's some leaves. Now we need some sticks to actually keep the fire going. This should be pretty easy. Just find a bunch of dead sticks. Then we're actually going to try to make them as small as possible by splitting them up. Now, I'm no firefighter, but one thing I do know about fire, the more surface area on your fuel, the better chance you have of starting the fire. So we're going to split up those sticks to maximize our surface area. I feel like a scientist, but I promise you I am not. All right, guys, I think we've uh, got all of our material ready. Now we're just looking for some kind of flame. <sighs> and that's, that's going to be a problem. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, I'm going to the house and getting a fire starter. Sorry, guys, but I have no idea how to start a fire. And I doubt you do either, so stop trying to roast me in the comments. Well, on my way up there, I actually gave, got a few more materials. One, I got a couple pieces of coal. This is going to be good because it's going to keep my fire going while I go to catch my fish. Another really good thing is I pu pulled some pine needles and some little uh, sticks that I pulled out of the field. And then also found this little piece of string. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it might just come in handy. I think right now what we got to do is really start this fire though. Oh yeah, and the fire starter, it's this right here. It's the flint and steel, and then it's got some magnesium. Right now I'm going to try to put some magnesium on this leaf and then start it. Magnesium is a super flammable uh, metal. Now if I can land a spark on that magnesium, then we should get a fire. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, keep the fire going, keep the fire going. Let's go, let's go. Pine needles, pine needles. Where did I put the pine needles? Oh, here they are. Let's see, are pine needles flammable? I don't know, but I sure hope they are. That right, looks like they are. Sweet, okay, good. Pine needles are flammable. Now we're gonna come over with this little piece. Okay, okay. More pine needles, more pine needles. I'm not a survival expert. I'm just trying to make it happen. All right, looking good, looking good. Get some of these twigs put in there. <coughs> Blowing right in my face. There we go. Try to get these sticks burning. Try to get these sticks burning. And just try to keep it in the fire pit. If I start a forest fire, I am sorry. And it's kind of looking like that may happen. Dude, no, what the world? Oh, come on, man. I'm literally about to start a forest fire. This ain't good. Listen, guys, if I start a forest fire, I'm just telling you, I'm not posting this video. I ain't gonna rat myself out. Come on, get more sticks. <coughs> now I'm gonna try to shave some of this stick in there, give it something more to burn with. Why am I so bad at making a fire? <coughs> the wind sure ain't helping. The wind keeps shifting directions. I knew I should have went to Boy Scouts. All right, so I built a fire. The hard part's gonna be sustaining it, okay? That's always the hardest part for everybody. It doesn't matter if you can build a fire or not. If you can't sustain it, it doesn't matter. And that's usually been, usually been my entire career, okay? I've never been able... <coughs> Why does it keep following me? I don't know, bro. I'm gonna try to bust up this coal, put in it, maybe. Maybe that'll do something. Ow! It's hot! I don't really know what I was expecting, but... We'll throw in a piece of coal. What coals does is it keeps the embers burning. After all the wood's gone, the coal will still be there. Now, since we got the fire going, I built a little fire pit so it can't escape. I'm actually going to head down to my other pond. It's not too far away. If I start smelling too much smoke, I'll come back and try to put out the forest fire, but I don't think it's going to happen, okay? I do have it pretty well contained. Again, should have went to Boy Scouts. <laughs> Now, I've been thinking, and I'm just not too positive how good this spear is actually going to work. So, I'm thinking about making a change. What if I take the end off of this thing and make a gaff out of it? If you don't know what a gaff is, here's a picture of it. It's like a giant fish hook, but instead of going for the mouth, they just try to stab the fish. And, I mean, it does work. And I think that's what I'm going to have to do. <coughs> I hate fire. I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I don't know guys, I don't know how good it'll work. It's not super sturdy because it is just the top of a sardine can, but honestly, if we can get a small size bluegill, I think it can work. The problem, however, as you can imagine, how are we gonna get that close to a bluegill? Ah! 
out, but I think we're about to figure it out. Oh, sneak away, no, sneak away, there's a snake. There goes a snake. We gotta get it. Oh, snap, dude, he's gone. That thing is fast. Dude, that snake is fast. Dude, that snake got gone quick. He was a black snake, and he was a big one, too. He's probably three foot long. Dude, I would have loved to eat that thing. I don't know, man. That thing moves pretty quick for something without legs. Probably been a different story if I'd actually hooked it. I don't even know what I'd done with it. What? Kick it? I'm gonna stop right here on the trail for a second and uh, sharpen the other side of my stick. The way that my gaff works, I would've had to try to pull him towards me. And if for some reason I didn't hook him, I would've actually just thrown him on me. So I ain't gonna work, son. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sharpen the back end of my stick into a true spear point. That way I can take on different animals if I need to. Well, turns out guys, while I was actually back there sharpening my spear point, my gaff actually hit the ground and it broke. So now we have no way to get fish. I tell you what guys, this survival stuff's harder than I thought. I'm gonna have to call in an expert. Okay, Mamie, so whenever you was young and before like steel and houses and all that stuff was built, how did you survive? Because I'm having a little trouble. Well, just survived like everybody else. How though? Well, back then they was tools. <laughs> well, we need a new expert. You don't know anybody that's roughly, I don't know, six, seven hundred years old, do you? No. Dang it. This is hard, Mamie. You think you can like slip me a honey bun or something under under table? A honey bun? Yeah. I know, a little cake or something. That'll do it. Just don't tell anybody, all right? Okay. All right, bet. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing in over here. Nothing to see over here. I, prom I promise I'm not cheating. So after the last half hours, ever since I realized that I'm probably not gonna be able to get any fish, I've turned into a real scavenger. And I've got some pretty interesting finds. The first one, we have, looks like a piece of a paper bag. It's a little old, but never know what that could be used for later. Probably one of the most important finds, I got this piece of tin, also known as the top of a pop can. But then the next thing I knew, I actually scavenged a piece of food. Now, it expired a long time ago, but as you can tell, this is a frog. This could be eaten if you were maybe like a dog or something but we're not going to eat it because i don't think it's possible oh yeah and i also got this water bottle but i don't think it's any good you know to be honest at this point i was really uh, coming to grips with reality um uh, I, I knew i wasn't gonna get any food i just uh i didn't i didn't see it happen and it was right about that time whenever i really knew i, I was gonna die oh did, did you just say you you knew you was gonna die yeah i knew i was gonna die I wasn't making it out of here alive. But then I got an idea, and a pretty good one at that. What if I went out in the woods and used myself as bait? Maybe for something like a jaguar or a bear? Maybe even a, like a zebra or something? I don't know, something eats humans? And then waited for it to come to me. And uh, how'd that go for you? <laughs> well, glad that you asked. It actually went really good. As soon as I started doing it, I had some critters start moving in, but then I realized it was a squirrel, so, well, no food for now. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. Yep, that's right. Well, just to keep trying. That's the best technique so far. Okay, guys, a couple hours have ticked by, and I just want to come in here. I just want to ask you, can I have six feet of fishing line? Like, hear me out, guys. Give me six foot of fishing line, and I will complete the mission. And now that I asked you, I went ahead and decided that you said yes, so I have some fishing line. Now, this is just basic fishing line. Nothing special, no hook, no nothing. But first, I do have to make my hook. And I'm going to make that hook out of the top of this pop can. Now, I pretty much made one earlier today, but this one's gonna be smaller and better fit for bluegill. There we go. And so now I'm gonna turn this right there into a working fishing hook. Here we go, let me, let me try, ow, what was that? Well, something just bit me. No, never mind, it was a stick. Anyways, let me do my magic and uh, we'll see where it takes me. All right, well, there we go, guys. There's a fish hook. It's nothing too special, nothing too pretty, not too strong either. If this ends up breaking and not working, then we got a problem. Okay, we have a problem. Oh my goodness, what do I do now? Well, we're going to, oh gosh, this is so hard. Anyways, guys, I'm not giving up yet. There's one more technique, and it's an old technique. A lot of the old people used to use bones, but we don't have bones, so I'm just going to use a stick. Here's the premise. You put bait around this. You toss it into the fish. Fish comes up and eats it. Whenever you set the hook, this end of the stick digs into the fish, and this end of the stick just gets stuck in its mouth where it eventually comes out. I'm going to go ahead and make this. I'll get back with y'all in a second. This may or may not work out. Our hook has been made. Now it's just up to me to find some bait and get it in front of a fish and make it work and set the hook and catch the fish and land fish. Okay, we're far from done, but you get the point. Right here, right now, I'm just digging up some worms. This is going to be the bait that I need to chum up the water and catch the fish. So just going to collect as many as I can. I don't know how long this may take. So now I'm actually out here at the pond fishing and uh, I dropped my hook. So I had to make a new one and 
it don't work at the moment our worm is right there it is floating and nothing is interested this is uh this is hard the rules have changed Okay, well now I'm allowed to have a whole fishing pole. I know it's kind of bending the rules kind of a lot. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If this video gets 15,000 likes, we will come back and do it again in the summer. And we might even get to do it with Adam. That way we can have a little bit more help. But besides that, guys, I got a fishing pole now. We're going to head right down there to the pond and try to get a fish. That's our first step. And last night, it rained a whole bunch. The temperature dropped. The water color's already muddy. Everything is wet. It's freezing outside. I don't know, guys. This challenge may end up being hard enough just with these conditions. Hey, Rick up this worm real quick i just i absolutely cannot wait to go make a fire so i can warm myself up but then again i don't know if i'm gonna be able to because i don't there's nothing dry so If I do say so myself, that was a whole lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Luckily, we did catch a pretty good size one, so that should give us plenty of meat. There he is, just for you guys. That's a really big bluegill. Like, he's probably one of the bigger bluegills in the world. Not like in the world, but he's probably in like the 90th percentile, which is great. So I made it back to the pond. The fire is no longer on fire, as you could imagine. But what I gotta do right now is find a good sunny spot, which is right here. And then start picking more fire making material and set that out into the sun to dry. The sun's just now coming up, so everything still wet so i've got to give it time to dry out that's probably gonna be the worst part of everything but you know what you got to do what you got to do and you just gotta things are gonna happen but you gotta overcome it i guess anyways i'm gonna pick up some uh, dry stuff like this and pull it out and let it be drying in the sun it's my best option at this point and my only option to be exact oh the light shine okay guys we got some sticks now these actually started out wet which is why i've got them out here in the sun and i'm letting them dry we got some smaller sticks some a little bit bigger sticks and then some well really big sticks right now what i'm having to do though is literally leave them out in the dry now the fish is still over there in the bucket i could be skinning it up and everything and i might actually do that but i do want to make sure that i can get a fire going before i actually kill and well go ahead and skin up the fish all right guys here we go we're gonna try our best just like before got my little uh, hatch of magnesium if i can land a spark on it i think we'll be able to start some kind of fire right here pretty close pretty close but yeah like i said earlier 15,000 likes guys and we'll come out here and do it for real all right there we go there we go there we go there we go all right we got fire we got fire we got a little bit of fire not a lot though come on come on dang it no my stuff is just too wet man we lost that opportunity but that's okay i guess <sighs> Okay, a little bit of a fire, a little bit more of a fire. Let's go, keep it going. Okay, that's fire, that's fire. <laughs> oh, don't start this again. All right, now if we can get some of these on, if we can get some of these to burn, we may make come it. Come on, get the leaves in, get the leaves in. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get these sticks burning. Get these sticks burning, let's go, let's go. Let's go. All right, all right, let's come in with some sticks. Come in with some sticks. We gotta get the wood in there. If we can get those sticks burning, then we've got it. If we can't get the sticks burning, well, then we don't got it, you know? You gotta provide this thing with everything it wants. You want it? You got it. All right, I need more fuel, more fuel. We need more! More! More fuel! More! 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 We need more! 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 I want more! I'm gonna get these sticks, set them right here on the edge, so that, buddy, they can be drying up. Ow! That's hot! I want more! More fuel! I hope my fire didn't just go out. Oh, man, my fire's out. All right, my last chance, guys. I'm just gonna blow on it, see what we can do. All right, I restarted the fire, but just in a few places, and it's only burning little sticks, so. All right, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Now we got some fire. Now we got some real fire. Oh, God, sweet. Did y'all see me just do that? Like, are you gonna hit the like button or not? Like, goodness, son, if you don't hit the hot like button after that, then I really don't know what your problem is. I just started a fire by blowing on. Also, in the comments, I want you guys to do something. Tell me in the comments, are you good at building fire? Because I'm not at all. I've tried a lot, and I've only succeeded a few times but i want you guys to tell me that are you good at building a fire and where did you learn it from if you're not good at building a fire just say like no i'm not good at building a fire. but we do have this going let's add maybe another stick you can't cook a fish with leaves that's just you don't have enough time to do that you know what guys it's gonna burn or we're go i don't know guys it's going to burn i want to go ahead and start dicing up my fish because i know we're going to make this work one way or another it's gonna work it's gonna work it's okay <laughs> the good thing about fish is that it shouldn't take a long time to actually cook now the way i'm gonna do this fish like we decided 
earlier in the video, stab this thick through it and really just roast it. And uh, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to scale it. So that's our plan right now. Scaling him's really easy, actually. You can do it with a spoon, back of a knife, an actual scaler. But in this case, I'm just using the back of my knife and it works absolutely perfectly. And then after we get done scaling him, I'm going to do one more thing and that is gut him. That way we're not like cooking his guts. Stick right through the mouth. There we go. We've basically made him a fish kebab and I'll set him right over here, right on top of the fire. He can start cooking right there. Operation hurry up and get more sticks before the fire goes out. Complete. And our bluegill is roasting. We're gonna go ahead and name him Charles. Cause he looks like one. Ain't that right Charles? Bet. Right now we do have fire, but we're mainly in the process of drying out the uh, the new sticks that I just brought in. The bad thing about right now, but we have found a way to overcome it, is a lot of the sticks are wet. And they need about, I don't know, five minutes in the fire to dry out. I think... <laughs> What is it doing? It's literally following me. It's literally following me. No, that ain't gonna work, son. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely looking kind of done. Just maybe a few more. Well, I don't know. I think it is kind of done. I didn't really get to cook it perfectly evenly. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the stick off. That way I don't get ashes everywhere. Here we, anyways, guys, here we go. I'm just gonna pick, try to pick some off. It's very crispy on the tail, so I don't know. I don't think so. Dude, this is actually really, really, really good meat. I'm gonna try to peel back some of the skin. I'll just grab some. This is honestly the way to go if you're gonna cook fish. Just, oh man, yeah, this is good fish. Pure white meat, just like if you'd go to a restaurant or cook it yourself. Literally no difference. The only difference is that it's probably almost about 100% sure it's not gonna have any seasoning on it. Obvious reasons, but uh, anyways, here's our first bite. Tastes just like a fish. Maybe a little bit undercooked, but not really. It's really up to what you like. You can taste the fire, but I'm honestly not too sure if it's the fish that tastes like the fire or my fingers. There's actually quite a bit of meat on this. I'll peel it back and let y'all see. But that's just one side. Now, yeah, it is a pretty big bluegill, but still, again, if I caught two or three of these, I could last a long time. Subscribe if you're not already, because if we get 15,000 likes, which I, I do think we will, me and Adam will come out here. We'll do it literally only a knife. Anyways, if you like the survival videos, click right up here to watch a survival trapping thing, or click right up here for my entire survival playlist.